Let's go here for a moment. Is the Nimrod, uh, the Nimrod, let's go here, let's do this for, for a moment. We want to look into so-called Jewish fables concerning the one name Nimrod. Is Nimrod and what we've been led to believe of Nimrod based on Jewish fables? Right? Is it biblically accurate? Or have a lot of uh, pieces been filled in by the very fables that we're told to avoid? Let's look right here. We can see there's four results for Nimrod in the Bible. Very interesting. So where are they getting a lot of this evidence concerning Nimrod and the narrative, the particular narrative that we've been led to believe? And see, now the worst thing about this whole Nimrod uh, fable is that it's not an outright lie what's being put out, but it's a deception. And a deception takes some truth and then twist it, right? And twist it. So here's what we find in the Bible for Nimrod. All right, now notice this in Genesis chapter 10, verse 8. And then we get to um, Genesis. All right, when we go to Genesis, the next chapter, they'll say, well, you see this part right here? They'll say, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. I was just watching a video. And the person putting forth the video seemed very sincere in their belief, but they've fallen into the trap of the Jewish fables, believing that their narrative or the narrative that they are superimposing on the biblical text and cobbling together pieces of um, archaeology from various cultures and trying to say, well, it's all the same thing. But then notice what it says, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, right, from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and dwelt there. Now, it's very, very interesting reading this narrative, but they'll say this was Nimrod, right? And they'll say it was Nimrod because of, let's go back, uh, Let's go back to this chapter right here, right? Chapter 11. And they'll say, you see right there? And Cush. Now, Cush, you got to remember what Satan says in Job. In Job, I think it's four and four. In Job four and four, he says, skin for skin. Man will give all, uh, give all that he possessed for his life. But the skin for skin, the racism, I want you to just... Um, Make a note of that right there. So I'll say Kush, because Kush overtly, obviously, is considered to be black. When the fact is that all of them, racially speaking, were black peoples or melanated peoples. But we're told that one was black, one was white, and one was Chinese or Asian. This is what we're told. Right? This is all part of the same Jewish fable right here. Right? It says, verse 9, it says, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, they'll tell you that that word before there doesn't mean before. It actually comes from an old English word, but the Hebrew word actually means before in a positive sense. But then they'll say the Jews who call themselves Jews, and let me show you which Jews they come from, all right? They come from the European Jews and the Babylonian Talmud. This is where most of the legends and that we get concerning Nimrod have their origin, right? Have their origin. Now, let's recall what Revelation chapter 2 and 9 and 3 and 9, but begin with 2 and 9 says about the blasphemy, right, of those who call themselves Jews. Now, it was proven that the Jews or the Judahites of the tribe of Judah, like the lion of the tribe of Judah, are likened to the children of the Ethiopians or the Cushites. We have this in Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? 
So it's very interesting because a lot of these same ones avoid the true humanity of the Messiah, of the Moshiach, of the HaMoshiach, Bain Elohim Chayim, Christ, the Son of God. They will avoid that. They say, it's not really important what race so-called Jesus is. They'll say that, well, we're colorblind when it comes to that. But it's overtly racist, the Jewish fables. But they can't acknowledge the fact that the one they call Jesus, whom they call Jesus, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, is black. This is very, very interesting. And just make that, make a note of that. Wanted just to share that right there. But let's go on. All right. So they'll say right here that, and Cush begat Nimrod and he began to be a mighty one. Then they'll say, oh, he was a giant. Okay. And he was a mighty hunter before Yahweh. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yahweh. And they'll say, well, here's the connection with Genesis chapter 11. We're in 1010 right here, where it says, in the beginning of his kingdom, speaking of Namrud or Nimrod, was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Remember, it says, as they journeyed, where? From the east. But if you know where this land is in Babylon, Iraq, over in that region of the world, if you know where Cush is, for Nimrod to start his kingdom there and him being a son of Cush, he must have been coming from the west. Are you following me on that? You have to look at a map. We're going to, we're going to touch on that. But here's the key verse that they miss is verse 11. Out of that land went forth Ashur. I want you to make a note of Ashur, right? Ashur and build it Nineveh, the city and the city Rehoboth and Kalna or Kala and Resin between Nineveh and Kalna, the same is a great city. I think this is interesting because, you know, it says great city, mystery Babylon. So there's some mystery to this Babylon. And it's the Jewish fables that confuse the whole issue. The latter day Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, but are actually Luciferian so-called Jews, the synagogue of Satan. Now, this is not to say all so-called Jewish peoples, but if you don't know about the Sabbateans and the Frankish and all of those folks there, then you're not really going to understand this. And this is why a lot of them will avoid a lot of these conspiracy theory people. They'll avoid the issue of the Jews, right? In the same way that um, in this new uh, so-called black video, Hidden Colors, they avoid the issue of the Jews and, and, and their role in the slave trade, the Jews who are the European Jews, Right? They also avoid the issue of the true Jews, the black Jews, the Jews who are like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, or children of Israel. They will avoid that right there. So this is why I'm touching on this because more and more videos, I'm seeing these narratives about Nimrod and people go off like that's what the Bible is really saying. Yet they don't identify that this is based on latter day Babylonian Talmudic Jewish fables. But here's the interesting thing. Hawaria Paulos, right? The great apostle Paul, who was raised as a, a Pharisee. So he understood these teachings, right? And he opposed them in the Moshiach. He preached the Moshiach. His eyes were open to it. And here's what he says. We have right here, when we look up fable and fables, right? We have this one right here. It says, First Timothy 1 and 4, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. All right? So it's avoid, right? not to give heed right? to fables. All right? What is Paul saying to Timothy here? And endless genealogies. Genealogies are important, but endless 
genealogy. You notice the key word is endless, which do what? Which minister questions, in other words, doubts, rather than godly edifying, rather than God's economy, right? And, and this economy of grace, right? So it's not speaking about grace, but it's actually pointing out racism, this divide and conquer. This is Satan's whole strategy. All right, this is why Paul mentions this right here. But let's go right here. It says, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather to godliness, to resembling God in spirit and in truth. That's what godliness means. All right, be ye holy as our Abba Father of Venus Shabbat Shabbayim, as he is holy. One more right here. Second Timothy. Right, four and four, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. In other words, most of these same folks who are putting forward this Nimrod narrative, and we show them the evidence that Yeshua HaMoshiach was not like their whitewashed Caesar Bogiers and fake Protestant pictures, they will turn their ears away from that truth and tell us that it does not matter what race Yeshua is. The Jesus Christ of the Bible is, right? And shall be turned to fables. And these fables, now we're gonna, we're gonna bring this, bring this to a head right here. Okay, here, now we have Titus right here. Right? Titus, right? 1 and 14 says, not giving heed to Jewish fables. I remember it's Paul saying this. He knows what he is speaking about. But most of us have forgotten the context because of the COINTELPRO, the confusion, the whitewashing, the iconoclast, the turning, saying black is white and white is black. This has gone on. All right. So not giving heed to Jewish fables, which the Nimrod narrative that most of the world believes, it's a European Jewish fable. All right. And the commandments of men. Man-made commands that do what? Turn from the truth. I right? Turn from the truth. And one more, the last verse down here, we have uh, Peter, Second Peter 1 and 16, where it says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. That's what the Nimrod narrative is. The modern Nimrod narrative, Nimrod, Samaras, Tam Tammuz, you know, that's what it is. It's a cunningly devised fable. And here Titus tells us who devised this particular fable. The Jews who call themselves Jews and who are not. Right? Because even Paul speaks about the Jew is one truly who is circumcised in their heart. Not just the outer, but it's the inner, the spiritual one. That's why Christ says salvation is of the Jews to say of Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah. Right? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach, Geetachin Jesus Christos, and we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Very, very interesting. So, this is why I'm beginning to touch on this issue too. Right. Um, because as we investigate the whole Nimrod and Samaris, um, uh, fairy tale. I mean, it's a fairy tale. Straight up, it's a fairy tale. Like I said, there's some other vids that this might be a lead on that particular video. And we want to just put it out as a question or maybe just make it as a, a declarative that the, the Nimrod story Right, the so-called Nimrod story is a Jewish fable. Right, is a modern, you know, Jewish fable. Right, that actually contradicts. Right, that contradicts the scripture. Let's go right here and look at this right here. Let's get a little fuller, right here. All right, let's go. Where are we right here? Okay. Uh huh. It says, not giving heed, right? Not giving heed to Jewish fables, right? Well, what Jews is Paul talking about? Let's go right here, 
right? And let's look up what the scripture says about the Jews, right? This is why you have to study, well, who are the Jews and who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Now there's 244 mentions of Jews, but what we're going to focus on right here is uh, my revelation. Now the Jews who don't believe in the Moshiach, this is the this is the point right here. It's interesting that we have Christians that say they believe in Christ and they will adopt the fables of the Jews I, who do not believe in the Moshiach. I, this is this is very, very interesting. I, and okay, so here here's the here's the verses. Here's the verses that we want to focus on right here. Here we go right here. Right, he says to the church, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the what? Blasphemy. Now, blasphemy is usually an insult to God. Notice that, blasphemy. Blasphemy could be considered to be an insult, but in the context of the scripture, when it's used blasphemy, that is insult to God or making oneself like God. In other words, the Jews who call themselves Jews make themselves the authority on everything so-called Jewish, quote, end quote. When we have testimony of Hebrews and Israelites and Jews racially, ethnically, historically well before them. All right. So he says he knows the blasphemy of them who, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the what? The synagogue of Satan. All right. So the Nimrod narrative that many of the world believes as true is based on the synagogue of Satan and on Jewish, modern day Jewish, which say they are Jews. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. All right. All right. So, yes, my brothers and sisters, the modern day um, Nimrod. And this is just one example. But I think this is a very good place to start with the so-called Nimrod, Samaris, Samaramis, um, Talmuz uh, legend. It's all from a Western Gentile tradition, and we check the the um, the older, right, and the authentic, really, not just the older, but it is it predates the European Jewish. Like when people talk about Christianity, they only know about it in a Protestant or Western Gentile Catholic form, right? And this is very interesting when you talk about Judaism. We only know it in a whitewashed European or Ashkenazi Jewish form. And doubt is ascribed to those very people, the Ethiopians. And we Ethiopians at home and abroad, even though the scriptures very directly says so. So we have the scriptures and we have the historical proof that the Hebrews and the Israelites racially, physically, Speaking Now, if we can't admit to the physical, the obvious truth, how are we to accept their word on these fables, these Jewish fables? But that's what's exactly happened, that they have presented another, another um, gospel. And even many Christians have bought into it. And this is basically the whole Nimrod um, narrative and the Tower of Babel narrative and there's a half of the story that we need to check out and i'm gonna point this out right here this particular the get la item all right i would recommend ones get a copy of this all right the get la item all right this particular book right here all right half of the story all right, from the Eastern Church, in other words, the anti-Romanist church, all right? Book of Adam and Eve, 
right, which gives a pre-Babylonian Talmud, right, which gives the other half of the story, the Ethiopian. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith yod heh saith Yahweh. So my brothers and sisters, um, recommend you get a copy of this, just showing you this right here, the book of Adam and Eve, also called The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. Right? This is a book of the early Eastern Church or the primitive church, right? which you see was translated right there from Ethiopic. Remember what the scripture says, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel. And this book is a, is a treasure, right? For those of us seeking the, the half of the story and not wanting to follow so-called uh, Jewish uh, fables, right? Or believe Jewish fables, right? Because as you study them, you'll see the, first of all, the overt racism, Right? The overt racism and the overt Christ denial. And this always has been a question for me. Why do Western Gentile Christians lock, stock, and barrel, swallow, hook, line, and sinker European Jewish fables when the majority of so-called European uh, Jews, the same Jewish fables that they will adopt and listen to, is because... Um, They're, they're in bed together in that sense, the so-called counterfeit Jews and the counterfeit Christians. And that's basically the half of the story right there. Some more to come on this. This is Wendem Yadin, right? This is Rastafari Rebbe reporting for the Lion of Yehuda Society of His Majesty. Stay tuned, brothers and sisters, and be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel and also to Rastafari Groundation. Shalom.